Hello YouTubers, today I'll be covering the firmware update for the Nikon D750. They recently released version C1.01. So first thing you want to do is pop onto the Nikon USA website or whatever is local to you. And then you want to go to service and support and then click on update firmware. So I should clarify that this will be done on a PC, but the overall process shouldn't be too different on a Mac. So you want to just do a search for D750 once you're on the support page and you're going to see version 1.01. .01. Click on that and then scroll to the bottom. And if you're on a PC, click on that. If you're on a Mac, click on that. Once you click on this, I'm using a Chrome browser. So this downloads into my um, download folder, which can easily be accessed by pressing Control and J. So while this is downloading, So the three things that Nikon has mentioned as being updated is about the um, overexposure when you had your auto ISO set to on and you use either the 1 200th of a second or the 1 250th of a second auto FP, which stands for auto focal plane. And this is basically um, equivalent of high speed sync for your flash. This is setting E1. Now, it's a bit too much to cover in this video since I'm really just covering the firmware updates, but I did include two links uh, on the subject. One was written by Dave Black on Nike and posted to Nikon's website itself covering the auto FP in detail. And another excellent article that kind of explains in layman terms is um, provided by Daryl Young. So again, you'll find these two links in the description for this video. Getting back to the other two changes, one is about when you had your D750 hooked up to a 4K compatible TV via HDMI, I think both the display and the camera and the TV was incorrect. I have never used it, so I don't know what the exact issue was, but it's been resolved now. And last but not least, there was a noise that could be sometimes heard when you had the custom setting D1, which is for your beep, your autofocus confirmation beep. When you had that set to anything other than off, um, that noise has been reduced. Again, I haven't experienced that issue. And speaking of which, the current hot issue that's being touted all over, all over the internet, or at least the forums, is about the D750 banding. I'm actually happy to report that my particular copy of the D750 is not afflicted by this issue. My serial number begins with 300 and then 2324. I don't know if there's a particular batch or, again, maybe just quality control um, was bad on certain batches, but I'm relieved that at least my particular sample didn't encounter it. So. Hopefully Nikon will own up to it and start, you know, maybe releasing a service advisory or whatnot. It's, but bottom line is if you're currently facing that issue and it is big enough of deal for you, please get in contact with Nikon service. Okay, so back to the firmware update. What you want to do is find the download that you had and then you want to double click on it. Once you double click on it, it will extract out a D750 update folder. Double click on that and within there, you're going to find a file called d750 underscore 0101.bin. You're going to drag and drop this into the top level of your SD card. And once it's copied over, just verify again that it's not shoved into a folder, but rather in the root of your SD card. Eject your SD card and then take that card and install it as the sole card in your d750. Now, one thing is before we proceed any further, I do want to strongly caution that Nikon advises that you run this with a fully charged battery and as the sole battery that's installed on the D750 itself versus off of a grip. Now, the reason for this is because you're updating the firmware. Now, for those not familiar with the term, basically, it's the set of instructions for your device that operates it and pretty much if you lose power during a firmware update, you could actually potentially brick your camera. What that simply means is that, think of it as the operating instructions for your camera, right? It's embedded into your camera itself. Once you brick it, there's no way for the camera itself to power it on because that is the basic set of instructions that says, okay, after you turn on, these are the instructions, blah, blah. So if you will, even though technically firmware is a set of code and software per se, but that's embedded within the hardware itself. So once if you damage it during its writing, you could potentially break your camera. So that's why, again, uh, I'm showing you the MBD-16 right here. You got to be very careful. There are electrical connections. And for whatever reason is, if you don't have your grip mounted on tightly, firmly enough, and it even loses that power for a fraction of a second, 
it could shut off the camera during a firmware update and like I said you could break your camera so again make sure you have a fully charged battery installed go ahead and pop open your camera you, what you want to do is go into the menu and then go into your settings the wrench icon come into firmware version press your OK button here you'll see that I've already updated to version C.101. I want to make sure that this worked before I even um, tell others to attempt it. So what you will do is, let's just pretend for intents and purposes it's still stuck at 1.00. Click on the update button. It's going to ask you, hey, do you want to update? Go ahead and click on yes. Click OK. Now even though you already had it, it's OK. It's going to update again to version 1.01. And pretty much you're going to see this progress bar. It's going to start off in, I think, yellow or amber. And then as it goes across the screen, uh, the further it goes, the deeper green it will get until you finally reach the very end. It will get to green. While the firmware update is in progress, you will see a PG up on the upper LCD screen. And then when it's complete, you'll get a message that update completed, turn camera off. At which point, simply shut off the camera, turn it back on, and go to menu, go to you know the wrench icon, settings, firmware version, and just confirm that you have been updated. And that concludes the update process. Now, if you were afflicted by any of the three issues that Nikon had mentioned, you could go ahead and test it out at this point. And that concludes this video. To see more videos like these, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks a lot, guys. As part of FTC disclosures, none of the products used in this video were sponsored. Everything was purchased by me for my personal use.